What is good? We are back with another installment for this mock draft with the FF Dynasty full tripod. What's good? Big Co, how's it going over there? What is good? Um, still working on the team that I'm not, uh, it's what my best team ever, but we'll, we'll get through it. Hey, I'll li- limp through, I'll limp through. It's not about the team you mock, it's about how, what, what you say and, and what you did and, and the things you learned and, and what you would or would not do. Sometimes I don't even draft the team I want, sometimes I just draft willy nilly, but uh, we, we got this mock, we're linking it to the other mock draft that we did. If you found this video by yourself, great, but if you're watching the other video, there was a link to tell you about uh, which tight end to take where and kind of to tear up the top couple of guys and then who you would take kind of in between that. So that's the practice we're going to go through today. Jay Wayne, how's it going? Doing swell. Mm, fresh pop on, on, on Mike. I like A it. Fresh crack. On demand. He and Jay Wayne going same beersies. Revelry, Marsh Hen, Cream Ale. Holler at your boy. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm when I'm not drinking revelry, when I'm drinking revelry, when I'm not drinking revelry, when I'm drinking revelry, nice. he's using the horn as a penis. Instead of a red rocket, it's a red bugle. If you're listening <laughs> on the podcast, this is why you got to jump over to the YouTubes. And Good. if you're on the YouTubes, hit us with that subby. Good segue. Hit us with that subby. Good segue. There, let's go. All right, so. We are we're picking up here. Pick two seven. Uh, if you just left the mock, or if you're if you're listening, or just picking up solo video here, two seven in the draft. Uh, a lot of the usual suspects are all gone, um, and now basically leading into this, um, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, Najee Harris, and then all of the sophomore running backs have been taken. Um, so all those guys that were rookies last year, running back wise, uh, the big ones. Uh, that Gibson, Clyde Edwards, Swift, Dobbins, Akers, um, obviously Chubb, or obviously. Uh, we talked extensively about the sophomore rookies. I'll throw a link up there, too, for your pleasure. If you want to hear what kind of order we think those guys should be in. Got you covered. Got you covered. And then so Devontae Adams is also gone. That is something that you got to mention these days because sometimes he does fall. So now we're picking up at two seven, one pick away from Big Co's pick. Um, and George Kittle goes off the board. Uh, so this is tight end premium. Uh, so, you know, most ADPs don't have tight end premium in the, in the, uh, figurings there. So I know like DLF, we use a lot of that. Um, and that, that doesn't figure that in. Uh, so this is premium and is, is George Kittle right here. Is that, is this a, is this a good pick? Are you, are you fine with taking him here? Would you take him earlier? Would you take him later or really just any tight end? If Kittle isn't the pick here for you, because this you, is you basically like for you. Yeah. This whole um, show is basically for you. So. <laughs> because I love a good tight end. Well, because you know you're you're and all these mocks you're you're always getting the, the tight end. So uh, let's let's talk about it. Well, I've been you know I've been pushing Kittle's ADP up the board as hard as I could for the last couple of years. Um, I said Kittle. I meant Kelsey. And who doesn't love George Kittle, right? Obviously, um, I think there's two things that hurts Kittle. He's in, and, and I don't think any of them are not public news. Uh, he's such a good blocker that he doesn't get out as often as he could to get as many targets. Now, his efficiency is through the roof when he does get a target. The other thing that hurts, well, I'll say three. The other thing that hurts tar, um, Kittle is the um, prolific running game, especially in, and you get close, the, some of the short area touchdown. Uh, uh, potential isn't there for him in the red zone inside the five type thing. Whereas Kelsey, that's where Kelsey eats, you know, he, Andy Reeves got that Patrick Mahomes will take it to somebody else on a sweep and then toss it to Kelsey going, you know, the, the tight end counter play that was basically created by Andy Reed is made famous over the last couple of years. You don't see George Kittle getting any of that. And then the third thing is just he's such a good blocker. He's such an awesome football player, and he's so much fun. He's having so much fun out there. He's almost like one of those running backs or one of those big wide receivers like Mike Williams that just throws his body all around. He does get hurt more often than – I mean, Kelsey hadn't missed a game in five years. So Kittle's just kind of just doing his thing out there and putting his body on the line each and every play, blocking the hell out of anybody that gets in his way. And he gets – he's been getting nicked up over it and it just hadn't been able to reach he's he had a 50 point game last year yeah you know but the only the only knock i can put on kittle is is the is the injury thing right there i think if he hadn't been missing games i think he would be 
He's I think he's locked into this pick or earlier in the first round just because he is so much younger than Kelsey and he can do Kelsey like things on a point per game basis, regardless. Absolutely. of. But he just doesn't get the he doesn't get Kelsey's targets. That's all he does. If he when he does, he crushes. He just doesn't get them consistently. Obviously, you can't get them if you're hurt. But some of the games that he's in there, he hasn't been getting them consistently. Yeah. Um, and he hadn't had consistent quarterback play either. Uh, even even before Patrick Mahomes got here, Kelsey was you know just getting dumped down after dumped down from. Um, Smith Smith and then Patrick Mahomes takes it to a whole new level which includes the dump downs plus the and the defense is backed up 40 yards off the line of scrimmage leaving the middle of the field completely wide open for Kelsey um, yeah so K- Kittle doesn't get to enjoy any of that you asked me six months ago if, you, if I was okay with Kittle going ahead of Kelsey at ADP and I said yes and I'm still okay with Kittle going ahead of Kelsey with ADP it just doesn't feel right to take Kittle over Kelsey just based on what Kelsey's been doing for you. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> this isn't necessarily just about going with Kittle here. It's a kind of the whole, the whole spectrum of the first couple tier of wide receiver. But I mean, through eight games, Kittle exited one game with a, with, with a low point total of maybe four or six, but uh, through eight games last year, averaged 18.6 uh, points per game. So that'd be good for like wide receiver five out of average. Oh, so you can't play argue, through the, you ain't arguing with that through any of those things. So I'm not worried about any of the getting the volume, getting this, getting to that. He's in such a ridiculous offense with one of the best offensive minds that if he's out there and he plays, he's uh, the tight end one or two week in, week out. Right. And he's got four years on Kelsey. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm fine taking Kittle as the first tight end off the board. And I think this is the right spot to answer the original question. Uh, I think this is about where you would take the first tight end. I got to take all those sophomore running backs, which agreed Gibson's off the board. I got to take Chubb as well, which we haven't really discussed where Chubb belongs in that mix, but that's for another day. I'd have to take him off the board before I took Kittle or or Kelsey or Pitts. But uh, I could take those guys in front of Derrick Henry, like, like they did here in this, in this instance, uh, especially Kittle being 27 years old and just a dominant force when he's on the field and and he can score as many points as any of these running backs when he's healthy. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. I have no, I, I'm, I have no problem taking Waller. Number one, I have no problem taking, I have no problem. If you want to be the guy that says maybe not, maybe not this year as far as production, but I want to be the future. I have no problem. If you want to take pits, Waller caught a hundred balls last year and he's going to, and he's projected to do it again. And I, I mean, obviously every, every site has projections. Every site is different and you can, and, and I don't really, I've never been a real projection guy, but just on sleeper alone, Waller's projected to get a hundred catches. Um, yeah. I mean, you that kind of, I mean, again, this is tight end premium and we've been saying this forever and it once you get past the first tier, tier and a half, then really it doesn't matter as far as tight end premium. But these yeah. first these first four guys, it matters for tight end premium. And even bring Hawkinson into it because of those catches that he might get this year, you would think, with the depleted wide receiver core. It matters, it matters tight end premium with these first four four and a half guys. I'll call Hawkinson a half. He's not in this tier. If you got Patrick Mahomes throwing 35 to 45 touchdowns this year, right? And you got a quarterback who's going to score 28 touchdowns, and you're like, all right, well, only a few more touchdowns. If the, what's the difference between a quarterback getting four or five to push touchdown points versus six touchdown points? The problem is Patrick Mahomes was in your lineup each and every week, and you didn't have to pull your hair about it, hair out about it. The guy that scored 28 touchdown passes, he probably wasn't in your lineup that one week he went off for four. You know, he probably had benched after two weeks in a row having one touchdown. Like, you know, if you got these big time tight ends right here, they're in your lineup each and every week. Every time the and yeah, there might be a week where Kittle or Kelsey or Waller doesn't crush it, but yet yeah, all the other weeks they crush it, they're in your lineup because you're not playing the guessing game. If you're down here and you got you know two or three of those other tight ends that are way down the list, and you know the Gaseckis and the John o. Smiths and the and um, hopefully Logan Thomas crushes it, but you're trying to figure out which game to start them. The game that they they actually catch eight passes, they're probably going to be on your bench. You know, so Mm -hmm. if you get one of these top tight ends, you just don't worry about it ever again. And that's the beauty of having the tight end, the top tight. You're not playing the guessing game each and every week, just like having a big time quarterback. Whenever the touchdown points go up, 
when the tight end points go up, it's it really, really matters to have one of these guys. Right. When it's tight end premium, basically the reason why you are drafting the Kittles, uh, what we presume is going to be Pitts, the definitely Travis Kelsey and the definitely uh, Darren Waller, and we'll talk right. about Hawkinson in a second, is because it is tight end premium and the volume guys um, – are going to be difference elevated makers. even are going to be elevated even more um, difference makers. You know, Travis Kelsey, however you want to chop it up. He was the wide receiver one last year over Devonte Adams with 367 PPR points in 1.5. I mean, he's, um, he was like the only non quarterback to be in the top 10 of scoring besides Alvin Kamara. Exactly. Like, right. And so then Darren Waller is, was the wide receiver two uh, or wide receiver three, depending on, a couple of things. Um, so that's, you know, there it is right there. Like there's a bunch of receivers that have gone off the board here. And like I said, George Kittle average 18.6. Now he only played uh, eight games and he did exit one of those games. Um, but if he, if he played just averages on the season throughout the season, he would have been wide receiver five points per game average wise. Now I know that's only eight games. So, you know, he could have had some ups and downs and maybe he goes to 16, maybe he goes to 21. Right. Um, you know, so that's th- this is why you draft, you know, TJ Hawkinson being on the Lions and not being quite as dominant as these other guys just yet. He was still wide receiver 25 um, in, in your lineup each and every week um, and dominating. And Mark Andrews, you know, probably the next guy that we're going to talk about here was wide receiver 28 with 199 points. And the year before that, uh, he had 241 points and it was a down year for Mark Andrews. He's still considered to be one of the better guys. He's an up and comer. Lamar Jackson likes him. Um, but in 2019, I believe he was the tight end uh, five or six at, with a bunch of guys. We Ertz, Kittle and all and, and Waller and, and, and Kelsey were all up in there. Um, so, you know, Mark Andrews has been, been, been there, done that can do it, uh, which is why he kind of sticks around and still quietly had a really good year last year at wide receiver 28. And he's going a little bit later than these guys. Uh, so let's kind of get into that's 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 the hows and the whys. You you elevate these top couple guys in tight end premium. They're comfortable with where Kittle started here. All the sophomores are gone. The sophomore running backs are gone. I'm fine taking them there. Justin Jefferson gone. DK right. Tyree Kill, AJ Brown. All those guys are gone. Najee's gone. Yeah, let me get the, let me get one of these tight ends here uh, to take as my second pick. And George Kittle would probably be the first guy that I select. Um, Anybody have, uh, you know, any difference of opinion on the first tight end in the first tier? I would take, uh, like I said, I would take Waller or Pitts. Um, okay. I mean, so, it, well, let's, let's talk, before you, next pick, you were actually on the clock if you're looking at the mock draft and you took Kyle Pitts. So I did take Pitts. Either that was like, hey, let me take Pitts and see if Waller makes it back to me. Um, just for, you know, obviously it's a mock and having a good time. Um, the, we're in a, the mock that we're doing right now was super flex, but I had the first pick. And then when it got down to three, one, I took Pitts and Waller back to back, um, even though it was super flex league, uh, but it was tied in premium. Uh, you know, I did take Pitts here. I think this, this was this draft mock draft had been done a month ago. This was probably my first spot to put kits on a pits on a team, any of my teams, even though it was a mock. So I just had to do it just to see what it felt like. I think, I feel. Uh, you know, I, I feel How great. Feel feel great. And, and since I mean, just being in other rook, just being in other leagues and seeing what's happening, just the value on Pitts, uh, you know, he would de- he would literally have to get shot in the leg for for him to be less valuable than any of these other guys. Nobody's given you. You can't get Pitts off of anybody's team. He's too fun. He's too much the next Calvin Johnson in a tight end slot in your lineup. He's unattainable. He's literally unattainable. Kelsey should have slash probably was unattainable uh, without quite, you know, without such the fanfare, but the points he's been putting up the last three years is just ridiculous. Yeah. And, but, you know, what he's, he's 32 in season, like Casey He'll be said 32 earlier. in October. Darren Waller will be 29 in September. So there's, they're like three years apart. Yeah. So I, I mean, honestly, I don't have a problem if you want to, I, I would just play in the, just play in the age game to this point with Waller, the where, where Waller is production wise. And I would, I could, I could take Waller over Kelsey. I could be but fine with that. I could, if do you that. could, if you could give me a, if you could give me a, you know, crystal ball show me that Kelsey could do just maybe he goes down to 90%. After, if he could do one more year of what he just now did and be the freaking 
eighth best wide quarterback. One. You mm-hmm. know, if he's a wide receiver one, and then he loses nine, he loses ten percent the next year, and then ten percent after that. I'll, I could take Kelsey over anybody, really, just because of what you're getting. But as Casey said when we were talking earlier, you know, he he is 30. He's about 32 in October. He could hit a wall at any time. He he looks fantastic. He he looks fluid out there still. But I mean, yeah, it age catches up with not everybody. A, not a ton of injury history either. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's certainly been tight ends who played for a while. I mean, not Kelsey's right on all their levels uh, within the gates and the, and the Tony Gonzalez's of the world. But I mean, there's been a lot of really good hall of fame players who don't play that long in other positions. Larry Fitz and Jerry Rice come to mind from the wide receiver uh, position and, and AP and uh, you know, LaDainian Tomlinson had some good later seasons and, you know, it's a couple of, there's, there's other guys in there who have long seasons, but like, we just don't know who it's going to be and when. And, and if, if you're, if, if you're telling me that you get, if Travis Kelsey's good until he's 35 or 36, then it take, I'd take him as the first one, but it just gives me a little pause, especially because I know the other guys are good. Right. And good enough to, to not have to take the risk and still get and not worry about them falling off. Right. And get somewhat similar results. Maybe not the best, but. And uh, Waller. Well, you could argue in football years, he's he's a young 28, but he did some damage to his body while he wasn't playing football. So I don't know if that counters maybe makes him properly aged, but. I made this point last week about a different uh, position. Well, I was thinking we were talking about running backs and maybe even comparing them to wide receivers or whatever, but youth. But like you said, I mean, if if, Ke- if Kelsey serve, uh, suffers a devastating knee injury, the drop in value that he's going to suffer versus the drop in value that Waller would suffer is two different drop. You know, Waller's not going down as far because he's three years younger. Mm-hmm. Kittle's not going down as far because he's three years younger, but then you may play the Kittle's always hurt game. Four years younger. Kittle, Kit Pitts is brand new, so he could have a devastating injury and be just fine. And, yeah. You know, so I think the val- the risk is there with tra- Travis Kelsey's age. If he does have, I mean, they're all just as likely to get hurt as the next guy because that's how it works. Anybody can roll on the other guy's knee, an offensive tackle gets blocked into you, and now you're out for the rest of the year. It has nothing to do with anything you did. But Kelsey being at his age, if he was to go down, miss the season, and uh, you just lose one, now he's 33, you know, so. Uh, coming off a knee injury, thirty-three too, not like a regular thirty-three. So uh, yes, yeah. there's your there's your risk there. So so me and Jay are both fine with Kittle being the number one. Not going to really argue with you if you want to put Waller up in there, um, and then Pitts. I guess so. I mean, you just took him here. I, I get what you're saying. I'm a hundred percent in on Pitts. It just seems like I'm going to have a hard time pulling the trigger at that point. I need Waller. I think. I know Waller is going to get me a hundred catches now, and, and I'm pretty sure Pitts is going to touch that and and. In the future, he's not going to touch 100 catches this year. If he does, something went wrong for the Falcons. Well, I mean, or they did trade away Julio, so. Right. I, I, I mean, he's not going to get 100 catches this year. He already has uh, 100 in minicamp, so. <laughs> right, right. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody. He averaged could... 1.5 touchdowns a game last year. He was an absolute dominant force. Not that. Nobody can do more with their potential value than Pitts. Waller can go have another 100, 100 catches, and he's going to be right here where Kittle is. But if Pitt can have 100 catches, he's going to be where TK Metcalf is at 1-7. Um, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. just that's the name Fair. of the game. Fair. So, so the upside of Pitts is through the roof. Yeah, and, the, and the, the downside isn't terrible outside of, you know, maybe you are waiting a year or two before you're really getting the return on the investment on Kyle Pitts in your starting lineup, which hurts at the at the second round. But – it, I think it'll eventually be just fine. And it'll probably be, you know, just fine this season, but not quite what you're, what you're paying at this point, but you're right. The value is, is, is there from the public perception and he's very hard to obtain. So, all right, Michael Thomas is the next guy off the board at two nine. Would you take any of those tight was, is Michael Thomas over any of those other tight ends, the Kelsey and the Waller that will be left? Uh, no, I'm taking the tight. I'm taking all, uh, the tight ends over all of these guys, but just because I can get more wide receivers. One, yeah, tight ends are gone. I have no problem if you want to take Pitts or Waller before any of the. I mean, I'll go back into the end of the first round. Kel, Kittle Kelsey is a, a first an end of the first round startup pick and a, a tight end premium for the last two years anyway. So I mean, there's just obviously you give up a little something, but you you if you get lucky. If you have no problem getting the fourth one, if you got that mid second round pick, you're going to get one. If you yeah. got that, you know, if you, if it's, 
if you know if you you're probably going to get at an early first round pick you probably get one at the end of the second too but you're gambling you know I, I have no if you have a preference and you're like hey i want pitts no matter what or i want waller and he's 23 years younger than kelsey mm-hmm. he's have 100 catches i have no problem going up there in the early second round to do it so jay wayne calvin ridley michael thomas Derrick Henry, and then the last tier of running backs, Aaron Jones, Mixon, ETN, CD Lamb, uh, Stefan Diggs, any of those guys above any other, any of the tight ends, the, at least the, I think top we're all four. pretty much in the top four and saying Hawkinson's one step below those guys. Um, any of those guys for you uh, stand out of saying, hey, you know, I might, might be taking this guy. I don't think I can take any of those guys over, over these four tight ends. I'm going to have to take most of those guys over Hawkinson. Uh, I think he's, I think that tier is a, is a decent step down. Okay. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think I can pass on those four tight ends I've, in a tight end premium. Once the sophomore running backs are off the board. I've, I've, I'm, I can generally agree with that. How about, okay. So then let's just go to TJ Hawkinson, who's widely regarded as the next guy. He goes before Waller in this one, a uh, little, little early uh, for me. And I think everybody here, I mean, we kind of talked about in the, that in the other mock, but like, where's the uh, line of demarcation here for TJ Hawkinson? Is it um, it's Aaron After Jones, running Mixon, CD lamb, Diggs, Mahomes, Jamar chase, ETN, Eckler, Montgomery, uh, yes, big co. See, yeah, I got to get all those studs first, uh, just because we're assuming something with Hawkinson, um, projecting not, a little bit, which uh, there's nothing yeah. else there besides Swift and a fifth round wide receiver. Yeah, but, but at the same, you could say that, hey, let's make the defense. We know golf doesn't want to throw it deep, and his best two wide receivers, their best thing to do is run deep. So that's going to be a contradiction there. So let's just take away, you know, his outlet to the running back, and let's take away his outlet to the tight end and make him beat us deep. And I got a feeling it's probably going to be a, a decent amount of success for the defense there. So maybe, maybe Hawkinson can get some uh, good, good plays drawn up for him. Um, you're gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't want to project anything out of that coaching staff until we see it. Um, like I said, I mean, I think Hawkinson, obviously the next player in line there for me, I don't, I'll take Hawkinson over Mark Andrews just because I think the points, the, the catches would be more valuable than the fluky touchdowns. Um, especially Tennis with Bateman. dynasty where this is long term. Is it fluky if there's 10 every year? Is there ten every year? Was it or did he, I mean he fell off last year? But he is. But he got. But, but he, we just talked about it last last he podcast. He, last he got. They he just got Bateman and Watkins, and mm-hmm. and all that should make his life easier based on your argument of of Hawkinson getting all the attention, right? Well, uh, getting a, getting attention from the defense because the wide. I mean, there's not a wide receiver on the Lions that can probably touch Bateman, and he ain't even played an NFL snap yet. Yeah, I. I I, I think Hawkinson's just default, regardless of what happens and how you're going to lay out the coverage, is going to just probably going to be de facto just peppered with targets, and that's what we're out after here with these Absolutely. tight end premium guys. Uh, right. So that's why he's up there um, and probably ahead of Mark Andrews in most cases, which we all are basically saying yes, um, and and also potential of T.J. Hawkinson as well as Mark Andrews, uh, where we where we see him. Uh, and I, I guess I agree that I would mostly take Hawkinson after the CD Lambs, the Diggs, the the uh, Mixons, the Ecklers, all uh, those running backs for sure, and, and Lamb and Diggs, and probably Chase and Nuke. But my, my question would be: Do you take McLaurin or Allen Robinson or Godwin or Cooper, DJ Moore? Do you I'm, take any of those guys? Do you take Hawkinson over any of those guys? I'm take I it just. I know what I can get in wide receiver, but I'm still I'm taking Amari Cooper and Chris Godwin before I take Hawkinson. And you taking unless those I was unless I was right there McLaurin at McLaurin and, and Allen Robinson. Those guys don't. I no, yeah, I'm taking McLaurin too. I did as long as if I'm in a if I'm in an end pick and I could take Hawkinson and another one, that might be one thing. You know, so, so you're saying Hawkinson maybe like end of the fourth round you're starting to warm up to. Yeah. Right. Okay, I think that's I think that's fair enough. I think I I'm into that. I can get down. Yeah, with he, that. he'd have to fill. He'd have to fall 24 picks from where he got taken right there. Like just just because I mean just just projecting. 
Yeah. All right. So the next wide receiver or running back <laughs> at the, the last position, the last tight end off the board is Mark Andrews in this, and this kind of, or the next tight end off the board is Mark Andrews at five ten. I took him um, on the coming back around um, or no going out here. Um, so, yeah. So any problems with Mark Andrews and where, like which guys you're taking ahead of Mark Andrews? I think that's a good spot for Mark Andrews. I think I would have to take the dudes in front of him. You know, Mike Evans and Keenan Allen, I can't pass on those guys. T. Higgins, let's go Tigers. Jalen Waddell, I could take Devontae Smith. Uh, I could take Claypool. But Andrews, I think, belongs in that in that range of, of you know, Kenny Galladay. I love the player. It's tough to pull the trigger on Kenny all the time. Uh, I think... I think Debo Samuel's a great pick. Tyler Lockett, I'm still very interested in. But but Mark Andrews in tight end premium, I think I think his job, I think his life could get a little easier. You get a little less attention. And and he he had 10 touchdowns two years ago, seven touchdowns last year. Catches and yards fell off a little bit. The whole offense did, but I think it's a good bounce back candidate. And I think he's I think him and Noah Fant after that, it's a tear break and like forget it after that. So I think this is the last chance of getting a decent tight end is with Mark Andrews or Noah Fant. And yeah. And I, th- I think that's a good, I think call. it's a good spot. I think that's the, I don't, the, it's kind of how the tears break down. It's that first tier of the four that we talked about. Then it's kind of Hawkinson a little bit out on his own, but Mark Andrews, not really far behind and it. You know, it sounds like kind of the way we're talking. Mark Andrews, is almost the more obtainable, better value. Uh, maybe in, in your guys' eyes, thoughts on that. I mean, we just kind of were touching on a little bit of all the added things in Baltimore. Everybody kind of figured out, hey, let's pack the middle of the field, which is kind of where Mark Andrews was living. Now, does Greg Roman evolve, which has always been a problem of his, one? And two, It's always it, it, they never had the weaponry to really – do too much, but it was always Lamar struggles really throwing those those intermediate outsides. So do, do teams just stop worrying about that, or is it that there's better players there now and they can do different things? And now maybe Lamar's a little more efficient with those passes. I mean, that's a that's a really good question. Obviously, we you know you take Lamar Jackson for his fantasy value with his legs, but if he gets a little bit more dangerous with his arms and the in the they say he's, they're going to open the offense up more this year. I, I think it's going to be more let Ramar do whatever it needs to be done so we can get into the playoffs and not have to sweat it like we did at the end of the year last year. Mark Andrews is 25 years old. He's not even supposed to be this good yet, right? He's not mm-hmm. even supposed to, like, you know, he. we probably didn't, in a, you know, revisionist history, we can see what happened this past year, the whole offense stepped back a little bit like Jay said, but we probably didn't give him enough due after his 2019 season because it was a lot eight catch games and to the 10 touchdowns but last year it was you know two or three really good games and a lot of not so good games so he's very aggravating to own i agree if you don't get him now and fan I, you know i've been on the i've been preaching the for the last couple of weeks here with the that blurb came out eddie bridgewater at, hooking up with uh jerry judy it's been like i could jump on that train really easy fan could be right there uh, do it you know the the Panthers weren't utilizing the tight ends. They haven't really done that since Greg Olson left. But if Noah Fant and, and Teddy Bridgewater get together, his PPR production and tight end premium league could help you out tremendously yeah. as well. Um, so I, I agree with what Jay was saying. If you don't get Mark Andrews or Noah Fant, then you might have a little bit of a struggle. I got a big um I got big plans for my boy down there in Washington. Um, you know, I I I believe in I believe in the steps that Logan Thomas took last year. So I'm I'm gonna I'm going to be drafting him more before a lot of people will. I, yeah, I he's not in this discussion as a 30 year old dude, but, but I mean, I, I could almost take Fant over uh, Mark Andrews. I mean, Fant was fantastic last year in tight end premium, and that was such a shit box team. And everything yeah, so sucked. Last year, I mean, like I said, 2019, Mark Andrews put up 241 points, 2020, Andrews puts up 199, and Fant puts up 180. You're real quick to touch on Andrews, like, I think the fact that him and Lamar have some experience together, have some chemistry together, there could be some times where they, when Lamar is moving around and doing his things and things maybe spread out a little bit more, Andrews is maybe a little bit of a benefactor of that. They're comfortable and have some chemistry together. So, you know, I could see 
Andrews being a little bit more efficient with what's going on and being a touchdown machine. Whereas a lot of those guys haven't been around a whole lot uh, with Lamar Jackson, obviously the running quarterback is going to take away some red zone efficiency for all the players. Uh, but I think Mark Andrews is really going to benefit here. Now there's going to be more to go around, but it, you know, it's just, I think it could possibly get a whole lot easier for Mark Andrews and the fact that they have a, a a relationship I think is, is going to bode well for him. So, but I agree. I think fan is right there. He just hasn't quite gotten over the hump to really be in that conversation where everybody's, but I mean, as a, as a prospect and we're playing dynasty here and he had a fine rookie season and last year was um, just on a garbage team um, and still, still did his thing at times. And there was just plenty of times where, if he gets rid of the yips and catches the balls that he should catch, um, he is just an absolute freak of nature. Uh, sure. Whereas uh, that's not Mark Andrews necessarily. Um, and fan is just on a whole nother level. Uh, and I was pro, I was fan over Hawkinson coming into this thing. It wouldn't take much for me to feel that way again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Fans two years, two whole years younger than Andrews. But, but right now you don't, you know, there's no, we don't know anything about the quarterback in Denver and, there are a whole lot of things going. There's a lot of good players in Denver um, where Cortland and Jerry Judy are, are both good and, and fans good. And, you know, there's some running backs and, you know, I, I'm not, I don't trust it a hundred percent just yet, but it wouldn't take a whole lot for me. I, but I do agree. I think fan is definitely, I think Andrews and fan are right there. If I miss on any of those guys, it's to Dallas Goddard. And then it's a punt. Well, before we move past these two, um, I think, you know, there's a six out of seven week stretch where Fant gets just four passes or less. So, like, if you, you know, and they're both so uh, obviously, like you said, Fant's 23 years old, Dynasty, it, you know, by the time he's 26, he might have been, he might have worked his way, way into progressing his route running and actually sharpening some, some, tools on the football field to go along with that athleticism where he could be at the top of the discussion. Let's take one of those games out because they had no quarterback for one game. That had to have been one of those games. Possibly played with a COVID quarterback who I think they had one pass attempt that whole game or something. Felt like that was a little bit closer to the end of the year, but where I was just now looking. But I mean, I th- what I was going to say is just I think Andrews is the safer bet for the sure. bigger, for the, especially with his touchdown, you know, usage in the red zone i think he's a safer bet for points sooner than later sooner than sooner than fan you know i think he's he's going to give you some of those tight end weekly winner type weeks more often next year than fan will unless fan and bridgewater just where fans right, right. catching six, seven balls every game. I, I like the fact that that offense has a lot going on, that there's a lot of st- st- good yeah, players it's, it's around not, him. I don't think that's it. I'm not, not going to dis- use it. It's muddy over there. Well, it's argument. not dissimilar to the Ravens necessarily, but it's the the whole offensive situation. The Ravens are one of the best, highest scoring, most efficient offenses in the league, and the Broncos are just not. And that's the difference for me right. with, with those two guys and the, and, and the situation. And Fant so, was only and I did just 19 use, points away from what Andrews scored right. on the on the shittiest right. situation almost yeah. possible. Right. Whereas Mark Andrews was in a, was in a much better situation. Right. And a down points. year uh, and, and on the situation. down year, but the year before that it's, he blows the doors off a of fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was yeah, 21 you know. at that point. Right. Right. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I like no fan. Like I said, I'm, he's the next Give guy no in fan. line. He's the next guy in line. I feel like it's Mark Andrews. It's, it's, it's uh Hawkinson, maybe like fourth middle four. Uh, then it then it's Andrews uh, anywhere from middle fifth on, and then Fant a, a few picks later. Um, and I, maybe that's why I'm a little more interested because he is a little bit cheaper. It's it's maybe maybe mid six going into seventh if you can if you can get that far, and then I think it's Dallas Goddard, and then to me it's a punt. I, I, I'm not I haven't locked in on Dallas Goddard yet. I, I'm not going to sit here and say I I'm feel super cut, but it just seems like he's next in line. He's been good. There's already. Uh, it's very important in, in fantasy. There's a, a public uh, love, love for, for Dallas cult. Goddard. We've seen it. And so there, there can be an increase in value when people lay eyes on him and he has a good couple of games and isn't injured and, you know, or they want to ship Ertz out. And I mean, it's a rookie uh, and it's another guy who did hardly played in his rookie year. And who else is there for targets uh, besides the running backs? Right. And, you know, so I just it feels like Dallas Goddard is 26 years old, rolling into his prime and in a prime spot to really 
uh, crush here and, and is maybe, you know, around later or a half around or a round and a half later than Fant. And I mean, he could, he could outscore Andrews and Fant this year. Sure. Well, like just based on this one mock board that we're looking at, Jerry Judy, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Debo Samuel, Cortland Sutton, all those guys go between Andrews and Goddard mm-hmm. and Fant for that matter. Andrews and Fant go close to each other. And like you said, a whole round goes by and there's Goddard. I would rather have Goddard and a Deontay Johnson or a Jerry Judy on my team versus the Mark Andrews and a player that got drafted right here with Goddard, you know, like a DJ Chark or, or Michael Pittman. I love Michael Pittman. I love what he's got, but I'm on, you know what I mean? I'm on, the difference in those tight ends is flip a coin and the difference in some of those in that next that I feel like there's a, Right this second, obviously anything can happen. The you know Rondell Moore, Tell, Rondell Moore, Terrace Marshall, and Elijah Moore all try any you know good couple good games on Sundays from jumping up in there and saying, "Hey, look at me, I'm a young stud too." But like what I can, what I know I can get out of a Deontay Johnson and a Chase Claypool value wise right now. What I know that De- when Debo Samuel's healthy, he's pr- pretty much unstoppable. And what I'm Jerry Judy is he is he could be knocking on the door being a healthy Keenan Allen young in his career, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I want to, I'm going to take one of those wide receivers there before I make a choice on those three tight ends. And just before I stab, before I grab an Andrews or a fan or Goddard, I want to, if those, those wide receivers on the board I'm taking one of those players. And then when it gets back to me, I'll take whichever one of those tight ends are left. Yeah, that, that, that would be, that would be a strong strategy. As long as one of those guys are left, it's basically the fear of missing out on one of those guys. And then you're kind of in a situation where I was able to still get Mark Andrews and Jerry Judy. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, had a short, well, your picks were close to each other too. Yeah. Um, And that's, that's a good point because I just named that's a great point. That's how you navigate the board, right? Because earlier when I was talking about how, how you want to play the, the top tight ends, if you're, if you're, if you got pick one eleven. You ain't getting one if you don't take one at one eleven or two two, right? You ain't getting back to you. It's how you want to right. navigate the board. You want to give up taking DeAndre Swift at two two and baller. Mm-hmm. I would do that. And then when it gets back to me, you can almost get the David Montgomery or whatever, Austin Eckler. Or, you know, you just run your team how you want to run your team. Same idea down here, just like what Casey did. Casey's like, all right. Well, I, I want to take Mark Andrews here. And when there's not enough picks that can, just like we talk about all the time, you count the blocks, count the picks. There's not enough picks that can go by that I'm going to miss yeah. out on Jerry I'm Judy. Get Chase, one of these I, exactly. Guys. So you, you can, and, and if, if and still secure a, a, an upper level mm-hmm. management tight end. Yeah, exactly. Upper level management tight end. I love it. Just like, like you can figure, but if you're on the opposite end, we're like, Hey, I got to make this pick here. And there's, Looks like we lost Big Co. Are you there, Big Co? Well, so if we did lose him here totally, which maybe he comes back, um, we'll pick it up with, uh, you know, which well, which when to punt and which tight ends to come with later, right? So I mean, just one more thought on yeah. Dallas Goddard. I, I think I got to take a few more players before I think about taking Goddard. I, I, I would take a stab on Pittman. I got to get some Rondell Moore. I think... Thielen, depending on your team build, man, Thielen in the seventh or eighth round. I don't know why he's getting so disrespected. He is just he just turned 30 and he had a he had he was like wide receiver nine. He was wide receiver one last year. I don't see why that would change this year. There's just so many points in your lineup for the next couple of years that I don't see why, you know, I I think I'd have to take that guy. I I can't be mad if you want to take Goddard. Um, but but after that, I think. I'm looking at this board, I'm I'm then then I'm fine. You know, maybe I take Terrace Marshall too over Goddard, but then I think I'm I'm down to take Goddard. Okay. I, I'm I'm fine with where Goddard went, and I'm fine with Pittman going after and and passing up on them to make sure I I've got myself one of the tight ends that I feel fairly volume. That's because it's going to be a large amount of volume towards, or there at least is an opportunity. Um, run, you know, all those other guys are great, and it's more fun, certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Thielen's a, you know a good Wait, but you, a would good you trade call, one but, eleven for Dallas Goddard in a tight end premium in, in uh, a rookie draft you know I mean it's it's yeah that's it is slightly different in the rookie draft to the startup and we, I and we, know and we all know that uh, but because you I mean, got yeah, a team if you, already if you, if you want if you want a a a 
good starting I think tight end that you feel good it. about it, then yeah, sure. I mean, a first rounder for Goddard sounds crazy. And, but basically the way that we usually talk about it is like one through six. Uh, typically that's the range where you start losing, being able to maybe get a first for one of those guys in terms of the startup. Uh, so it's right there. Um, but yeah, that's a good point, but yeah, if I, if I need a tight end and I feel good about Goddard, if Goddard can go into Zach Ertz, who was 17.44 points per game just a year ago, I'm not saying he's necessarily going to get there, but if you can tell me that that's what's going to happen and I can get that kind of volume or anywhere near that, then yeah, sure, all day. I don't know that you're going to be able to bank on that. There's a whole new regime. It certainly is. It certainly is. might not place as but much there, value on the be, tight end. He be, might not be as good as Ertz was, which nobody wants to hear that. Everyone's already said that Ertz is fucking dead. Well, yeah, but he, he very well easily – could just be de facto just target de facto for, you're right there's not much else there team. and so we that's, got big that's what i'm going with um and that's why I, that's why he's there i think he's gonna immediately have an impact for you that position whereas anybody else you're drafting right now is gonna i feel a little little less feel hit or miss about it there's you know more pros and cons i think with all the rest of the guys so we're we're picking up big co's back here we're picking I'm up back, so baby. Got, goddard's gone um, now what do you do? I think it's a punt situation for a few rounds. Um, yeah, forget about it. Friar Muth goes in the eighth, which is probably a little early. Can't do uh, Gusecki then off the board, which, you know, I think he's only got one year left on his deal. And the, the Hunter long pickup gives me some, some more pause. Plus they've added a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff down there, but Gusecki is a sick athlete. Um, I well, probably, tight probably end need seven to, last year. You probably do need to draft another tight end. If you're taking Gasecki, that's kind of the draw of those other tight ends is that you can just further punt even further down the line. I'm still going to take some tight ends, but it's going to be a lot later. If I take Gasecki, I'm probably going to use the next five in the next five, six, five picks. I'm probably going to draft another tight end or two. Um, I could be but fine I'm taking fine Gusecki, with- but I got to take Curtis Samuel, Terrace Marshall, Elijah Moore for sure over those guys. So let yeah. me get Chenault. Corey Davis, probably like Gallup. So who, who are the next, then maybe I who are the next kind of tight ends for you, big co? Well, it's Bob Tanyan. If, uh, if Aaron Rodgers, well, sure. We, we kind of excluded him from this conversation because he's such an outlier right now as well, well as Aaron Jones, but he deserves okay. some run because he is, he was so good. Uh, if Aaron, Fair if Rodgers plays for sure. Um, and, uh, Talent alone, I got to bring Evan Ingram up just to give. I, I've, I got no problem drafting Evan Ingram and then throwing somebody else on my team who I actually expect to play. Yeah. And because I just, if it ever happens for Evan Ingram, like, I mean, we've seen it. As long as he gets targets and he stays healthy, he can, he, you know, he can do it. Targets and healthiness does, is not a given. Um, he's, you know, got a whole new uh, regime in there since the last time he was actually really good at fantasy football for us, but he's still super young. So I'll take him and I won't throw my third. I'm, I'm taking Logan Thomas. Um, okay. I'm not going to, if, if I don't have a tight end already, I'll bring Logan. T- There's a lot of, I mean, I love, I love me some Michael Gallup. I love, I love taking Jarvis Landry and putting him, taking him late and putting him on my, on my team and making sure that I got a starter super late. It's hard to get somebody you know is good. So they can actually go in your starting lineup this late in the draft. Um, but I got to make sure I'm take. If I don't have one already, I got to make sure I get Logan Thomas because. And if I when I say I don't, if I don't have one, I don't have a good one that I know is for. If I took a shot on somebody, like, yeah, you know, like I said, I might I might draft Evan Ingram before I take Logan Thomas if I feel like that's the necessary, but the time it's not. Logan Thomas has made a name for himself, and Evan Ingram's got a lot of people upset in the last couple. Even Evan Ingram didn't even go before Logan Thomas in this mock we're talking about. Well, you took Logan Thomas before Evan Ingram, so. Well, there you go. But you paired um, him up with Kyle Pitts. I like that. You know, you got your you got a starter in Logan Thomas, and you can wait a minute on Kyle Pitts if you have to. Yeah. Which I don't think you're going to um, have to. I think you're probably going to be forced to put Pitts in your lineup. I, it would give it, uh, yeah, I, I put Pitts in my lineup week one over Logan Thomas. Well, yeah, and, and Big Co and 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 I are no, I got no problem taking two good tight ends in the top of this thing. Sure. Two of those top guys, and then just being stunting on some people, taking one away from somebody, and you know, getting Flexing. high end uh, receiver points from those guys um, all day long. So in my life, go ahead. Go, sorry, last guy, Ferkser was my guy. Some people, some people think that's stupid. Some people think that's great. Ah, so why not? If before the Julio trade, Ferkser, I got him on all my teams. I, 
bought him for some third round trade. I don't give a fuck. I bought him with some third round picks, whatever. I, you know, I, I got Ferkser. I'm, I'm heavy on the Ferkser. Um, You're going to tell me free Ferkser. I'll take them all day long. Like, see, I guess he gets a lot cheaper with Julio now, but I mean, Ferkser looked really good in limited action, limited targets. And, uh, and they, they have nobody else at tight end and that, and that, that team plays some tight end football. Yeah. So the Ferkser is going to be any, they split him out. I mean, he, they, they, he's not going to stick in there blocking. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's, Ferkser is my guy. He's obviously a lot cheaper than he was a couple weeks ago before Julio showed up. Yeah. And he's, and I got a lot less expectations for him now, but I mean, Julio, you know, anything can happen. He ain't exactly been playing 16 games a season in a while. So, uh, yeah. Well, if I miss, Ferkser. go ahead. Yeah, so if I miss tight ends, it's I'm going to wait around whichever New England tight end falls and waits around. I'll take that guy. Um, I, I took Evan Ingram in the 11th year, um, and that's going to be pretty much one of the, like you said, one of the first guys that I start targeting after I miss tight ends. But I even have a tight end and took Evan Ingram here because I've why not? Right, I, right. Like you said, Absolutely. I like I'm down with it. Um, it's always Cole Komet. I'm always looking for Cole Komet. I've been chasing the Bears tight end and chasing a a uh, naggy tight end because you know he fucking wants one. And Komet came on a little bit here and there, and I'll I'll take him in the 12th, 13th, 11th round. I uh, love that idea there to pair him up with with Justin Fields. Uh, they don't really have a ton of targets over there outside of Allen Robinson. Yeah, and for some I'll, reason they just haven't liked. Um... What's his name? Anthony um, Miller. And they don't. They can't yeah. stand Anthony Miller for some reason. Uh, I want to be in on Irv Smith, but I feel like I just got to let that go for another year and see what happens. Um, he's been, you know, whatever. Adam Troutman. Sure, if you want to take a stab, I'm probably going to miss him. Somebody's going to be a little more excited. Um, Ferkser, like you said, I'm pretty much always taking Zach Ertz because he's just fallen, fallen, fallen. Like, like I said before, Zach Ertz scored. Pull a sheet of paper out here. 261 points just in 2019, 17.44 points per game. I don't think that guy's dead. I just think he was banged up. The Eagle situation was trash. And just like Wentz, there was some garbage going on there. And I think if Ertz could get get going somewhere, he's going to be just fine. And if you're going to tell me you can get him in the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th round, holler at me. I'm in. Uh, I think that's one of the best later stabs you can possibly fucking take because in tight end premium, it's an advantage. Like if you can get 17 points a game out of, out of Ertz holler. Um, I'm going to continue to draft OJ Howard late um, because he was coming on and had a, had a bad injury, but that, that that's terrible. Ferkshire, like you mentioned, uh, and Logan Thomas. Uh, so I like all those guys. If Friar Muth hangs around into the 10th, 11th round, I'll scoop him up as well. So those are kind of where I'm living there. And then there's some later guys like Najoku super late. If, if, if it's longer draft going on, like still think there's talent there. You see flashes every once in a while. Uh, some younger guys, the hat, the, the long that Miami drafted and uh, the Tommy tremble at the Carolina Panthers drafted super late. Uh, those are kind of, those are kind of the guys that I'm always looking at. And Austin Hooper. I mean, had a really good season, but I, you know, I, I have a hard time taking him right now, but it could be a mistake. And he, he is pretty good. Jay Wayne, take it away. So I gotta, <clears throat> I gotta take it back to John Smith. That's, that's the guy that I'm like, I really wanted to get. If I miss on all those other guys, John Smith is a dude that has shown me something already. And then the Patriots go and give him $50 million. Now they do bring in Hunter Henry. But I've said it before, Hunter Henry's a better blocker. John Smith's a more athletic guy. I have, I think he's probably going to be getting more of the work. I, that's what I would bank on anyway. And then if any one of them misses, misses time, then the other one's going to be spectacular. I, you can get both of them. You could go bang, bang, uh, back to back with those two guys. But I, I'm, I'm really like loving some John Smith. And then one name that no one's brought up is Tyler Higby. Right. I will, that was going to be my last question is, is are we sleeping on Higby? We touched on it on the last mock that we did, but go ahead, Jamie. Well, like we've, we've said, you know, he big co was all in on that last year. He had the, the four game stretch of like the greatest tight end four game stretch in the history of tight ends. And, and, and we were wanting to be in on him. And, and now that Gerald Everett's gone, why aren't we more interested in Tyler Higby? I guess. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, like I said, uh, this is typically the time where, the guy will break out when everybody was on him one year and now everybody's off. And now it's, it's maybe it's prime time to break out because you got any finishing thoughts on Tyler Higby talked about a little bit the other day. Yeah. Just, I think, I think the, uh, I think Matt Stafford does more than the 
than uh, Gerald Hebert being gone. Honestly, I think that opens up the ability for him to not be blocking all the time and being and like holding in six, as in mm-hmm. not you know, um, just in straight up pass protection. The quarterback's about to drop back. Hey, we need more than five guys blocking up here because we're getting blown up. Um, I like I like I like waiting on Irv Smith too. I I take Gerald Everett instead of Irv Smith because the coach already came out and said his role's not going to grow. Why in the world would you say that if it wasn't true? It's such an you're, odd you're, thing to say. I don't even know what's going any, on over there. Like, that's like I, the I like the guy. I want like him. I want him. I want him. Isn't, I want isn't Smith that, so bad, but I got I got to let it. I got to let one more year go by. I'm isn't that the opposite year. of what you should be saying? Like, if nothing yeah. else, you should be trying to pump my man's self esteem up, not say, well, he's not going to do it any more for us like that's a what that's like a sand i don't know if that's a sandbagging comment or yeah you just don't even know how to read the room and you don't know how to talk to these people like what are you doing you don't want to talk to your that's such and then a you bad go and comment. talk up conklin such like, a bad comment um, yeah i like i like the gerald everett stab man that's a that's a good call um so just so uh, many tight ends i, I threw there. i threw a bunch of those other guys who were later round stabs but everett's everett's a good name there well you threw some guy uh, that like you said the Troutman hype is is probably too much too soon but he did you know the everybody that builds him up wants to tell you that he was the number one run blocker to tight end so he's obviously going to be on the field every snap with the the, the saints have a tight end out there they, and and they gave up a lot to get him so i like that i like i like the idea i think like you said i think there's going to be somebody out there that wants it more than me i'm not going to pass on troutman if i feel like it's there um, it's just come somebody's gonna take him more than me. Yeah. Um, and I made then, a trade to get him in a tight end premium rookie draft last year, but I, 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 which I'm fine with, but I'm, I'm probably gonna have to let him roll out and in, in drafts if he's going in the 11th, 12th round for me. I think even if, for, if even if Friar if move slides to the 10th or 11th, like you said, I think that's still too early. For me, um, he could, that, I could, that could, I could regret that easily, but yeah, I would, I, I I'm not some, taking. I'm not putting I'm not putting Fryermuth on my team over somebody like Michael Gallup. I mean Agreed. Tony Pollard's in a tenth. I, I got to take players that I know are really really good and can score points this year. And if something happens, something happens to a Dallas wide receiver and not named Gallup, Gallup's going to explode. If something happens to Zeke, Pollard's going to explode. I can't take Fryermuth over those types of guys. That's um, that's fine, but it just seems like for the bang for your buck in the eleventh or twelfth round of Fryermuth, that's where I would be down to start looking at him the 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 upside is is up there with all of these other tight ends that we just talked about in the 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 andrews the fans all that sure. like he's he's just a big nasty fairly athletic guy who um you know i i think personally that he could be he could be up there with those guys if, if he pans I, out so that, got, that's yeah, why i'm stabbing him that's why i'm stabbing at him at that point because i do have a belief that if he if he if he does pan out he's going to be way way up there I got no problem with that. I understand what you're saying. It's just the whole thing about early tight ends is it could be easily two or three years on your bench sure. percolating. And uh, I just would rather have some of these other guys over him. Um, same, that, basically same area. thing. People are, uh, you know, clamoring with Troutman or Komet is Fryer. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. But then at the same time, I mean, all those after Fryer Ruth and he's still a rookie, you know. Yeah, Fryer Ruth's the shiniest object as well. So every time, gets you every time. All right, boys, we pack this thing up. I think we did it. All right. Well, never talked this much about tight ends ever before, but we appreciate nope. you guys sticking with us. Hit me with that scribey if you're watching on the YouTubes. Let me get a five star review if you're listening on the podcast. And we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>